Have you ever created an amazing image only to have it print out blurry and out of focus? In this tutorial, we're going to learn about DPI and effective PPI by practicing with a sample publication. Before we get started, you need to go to Google Drive and download the assets and unzip them. You can find the link in the Canvas assignment. You'll want to pause the video until you're ready to proceed. You'll also need to boot up InDesign and Photoshop. Why don't you pause again? Let's go ahead and get started by opening the folder. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to come down to Open. And I'm going to go ahead and open that effective PPI lesson that you've already unzipped. If you get the prompt to update modified links, let's go ahead and say yes and let it go through and do its process. The next thing we're going to do is save the file once it opens. So let's go to File and let's go to Save As. And let's make sure you're in your right folder. And I want to name it first initial last name underscore PPI lesson. I want it to be an InDesign file. Make sure you're in the right folder and say save. And let's go ahead now and make sure we are all working in the same place. So let's go up to our workspace. Let's go to window. Let's come down here to workspace. And let's go ahead and come over to Essentials Classic. From there, we're going to go ahead and you should get a different properties panel and a few different options there. And now let's make sure everything looks the same. So let's go to view. Let's come down here to display performance. And we want to go ahead and do high quality display. Everything should look a little bit sharper now. And now that we've got the same workspace, let's go ahead and look at the links panel. So our links panel is right over here. And our links panel, let's go to our hamburger menu, come down here to our panel options, and you want to turn on actual PPI and effective PPI and say OK. You may need to adjust the size of those columns so we can see all the numbers. So you go ahead and drag that over to the right. And once you can see all the numbers, we are ready to get started. Clearly, it's easier to make sure you've edited your images before you place them in InDesign, but sometimes we forget or make a mistake. So let's go ahead now and figure out how to fix that. Now that we've set up the workspace, we can get started and correct what I call squished images. Images are squished when you create a frame in InDesign that's a different aspect ratio than the original frame. So how do you know that it's switched? Go ahead and look in our image in our links file and you can see you've got a number by another number which means your aspect ratio is not quite right and we want to fix it. So let's go ahead and grab this first image called testimage1.jpg. I'm going to go ahead and click that number one so it's going to take us to that image and it's going to jump. We can see we've got an image of a skyscraper here. If we go over here to our properties we can see our width and our height of that image and Part of that's what's causing a part of our issue. So let's go ahead and come down to our frame fitting in our properties and hit this first box called fit frame proportionally. And you're going to go ahead and see that it resizes and we stretch our skyscraper out just a little tiny bit, which is what we want it to do. So now we have just one number by another number. So your job for this part of the tutorial is to go through all the rest of these and go ahead and resize all of those images in the publication. It's going to take a little while. Make sure you save as you go along. And once you have finished that part, we'll go ahead and pick up and correct the image resolution. All right. We went ahead and fixed all those squished images. Now, before we get too far, let's save. Let's go File and come down here and save. Save what we've got so far. So we've corrected all the proportion issues. Let's go ahead and take a look at the image resolution because we want to make sure when you print out that hard copy, you're going to have clear, unpixelated images. So let's go ahead to our test image called Test 1. So let's go to our images and go ahead and click there. It's going to take us back to that skyscraper. If we review this information in the links panel, we're going to see that first number is 96. So we know that that's the actual PPI number. Because we're designing for print, I like to make sure that we have plenty of pixels, so I'm going to shoot for 300. So how are we going to fix it? First thing we're going to do is look at how we're using that image first. So if you didn't jump to it already, let's go ahead and take a peek. And you can see in our properties panel, we're using it at about 2.5 inches by about 3.5 inches. We're going to remember that number when we go into Photoshop. 
So let's go back to our links panel and right click on the word test image. And we want to do edit with and Photoshop. Now, if you don't have Photoshop open already, this might take a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is look to see what we know about this image. Let's go ahead and go to the top row. Let's go to image and come down to image size. So what we know from this when it opens is we can see that it's about five inches by six inches with a resolution of 96. And we want to go ahead and change that a little bit because we know we want the image to be about two and a half by three inches with a resolution of 300. So let's go ahead and resample it. I like to use the resample preserve details 2.0. I also like my reduced noise to be set at 100%. So let's go ahead and adjust the rest of this. So our resolution needs to be up 300 pixels per inch. And you're going to see that our preview is not quite as sharp as it is was before, so we're going to fix it a little bit more. So in the width box, let's go ahead and change that width. Make sure your chain is connected so it'll do the width and height at the same time. And let's go ahead and change that width to 3.25. And now I'm going to go ahead and let Photoshop do its magic. And it's going to go ahead and resample that whole thing for me, and I'm pretty happy with that. So next thing we need to do is make sure that we save the image because if you do not save it, then it will not make the changes in InDesign. So let's go ahead and hit save. And you might get an option to, uh, depending what kind of image it is, this one's a JPEG. So I want it to be maximum large file and OK. Now we're going to go back to InDesign and see what happens. So I'm going to click on my InDesign and let's go ahead and take a look at our links panel. Our PPI is now 300, and our effective PPI is 368, which is yay, totally what we want. So let's go ahead and save. Let's do a file and save again. And now you need to go through and correct that resolution on every single one of these images. They should all be 300 at the front, and should be pretty close to 300 uh, by the second number. So you want to make sure you're paying attention to how close how big they're being used in the publication before you go ahead and resize all those. So go ahead and push pause and work on resizing all of those images. Hey, you're back. Congratulations. Your publication will now be wonderful. It's going to print clearly. It's going to reflect all the time and effort you put in the design process. Let's make sure you remember to save. So let's go ahead and do a control S and save. You're almost done. We just need to package the project. So let's go ahead to the top and select file and come down here to package. We want to make sure that it's error free. I don't see any problems. Let's go ahead and say package. So let's go ahead and if it says save, let's go ahead and do that now. You're going to be prompted to, to put it, so uh, pay attention where you're putting it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on my desktop for now. And instead of the word folder, I'm going to put the letters P, K, G, because that lets me know which one I've packaged. I want to make sure that my copy fonts, my copy linked, my update are all checked. I also want the IDML. I want a PDF that is high quality. I'm going to go ahead and say package. And it's going to go ahead and do its thing. So let's go ahead and allow it to do that. Then what we're going to do is go back out to the desktop and we will create that zipped file because you need that zipped file to turn into Canvas. So let's go ahead and close this. Close that. I have on my folder, I've got this PPI lesson corrected PKG. So I'm going to double check it. Inside, I've got this one called fonts. I've got one called links should have an IDML, an INDD, and a PDF. It's totally perfect. It's what I want. So I'm going to close it. I'm going to come back out. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to do send to compressed folder. Now I am on a PC, so it's going to look a little bit different than it does on a Mac. Uh, so make sure you're paying attention to that part. And now I have this new zipped folder. And that is the one I am going to create and send to Canvas. I hope you have a better understanding now about what it takes to make sure your images are the right DPI. And I can't wait to see some of your amazing designs in the future. Talk to you later.